Welcome everybody. Oh, that was so weak. Well, uh, to uh, Young Composer reacts to uh, Coldplay Coloratura, official lyric video. Uh, a friend of mine told me that apparently Coldplay released a super long Pink Floyd-like vibe thing. That's all I know for now. Um, I'm very glad to be rolling the camera today. Look, uh, every single video I make recently feels like it could be my last video for a while. Uh, because the arm pain is not going away and uh, uh, something new happened though. I think there is a connection to my neck and uh, tension that's building up up there in the in the shoulder, etc. And uh, it's kind of moved to the left a little bit. So like I've overused my right arm, right? But today the left arm hurt more and there's every weird symptom that's on the right as, as well, like tingles and, and redness and whatever. Uh, uh, you know, let's just uh, start with this song. But basically, what that did is is um, make me think that this is probably not really just a overuse thing about the computer because it's basically I don't understand my condition. Uh, so I'm gonna try to like be reasonable and still do what I love to do um, because uh, it seems to hurt no matter what. So yeah. Mama, Helio, Paul, and me. 
sure I was going to pause this. I almost went for the whole thing. Uh, holy shit, almost five minutes. I keep swearing. Damn. Okay, so um, the beginning is really, um, really beautiful. Uh, makes me think of this song, Fly On. Um, just because it's, you know, uh, a little damp, uh, quiet piano. Um, there's many different chords, they're pretty simple, they remind me of the Beatles a little bit. I think Coldplay digs uh, the Beatles. Who doesn't, right? Uh, type in the comments if... Uh, type it in if the comments if you don't like the Beatles. Uh, I'm interested. I. It's funny, when the vocals come in, the way that he has to approach his lows, and Chris Martin has just an amazing um, quality to his vocal range where the the mids what you hear the most are are great and what that's what it, he's known for um the highs when he pushes into a, his uh chest voice are sublime um the highs in falsetto are sublime but the lows are great too um not many singers you know have developed their uh low and to such a to such an extent and i love it when he he uh, sings low, but yeah, when he comes in with those low vocals, that reminds me of Jacob Collier, and I know they've messed uh, with each other a bit. Uh, I have absolutely, I absolutely love, um, <laughs> and of you know, obviously I don't remember it right now. Convenience, god damn, Sparks, of course. Uh, I love the version of Sparks that they did together on a, an Instagram live, etc. But yeah. Makes me think of Jacob and uh, Space Lyrics. Uh, every band goes through that phase, I feel like, you know, phase where they're obsessed by space and uh, the afterlife, uh, parallel universes, a bunch of, you know, grand stuff, mystical stuff like that. Um, I'm lost, I don't know what to say. I'll just keep listening. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm frustrated because there's uh, some really typical chords that, you know, the Bowie type chords and uh, the, the, the the four that, that's major and, and becomes minor, um, super classic stuff. Um, a, a big, big example of that is uh, the song Creep by Radiohead, right? I mean, uh, fuck it. I'll demonstrate. Uh, so, in Creep, it's in G uh, major. I'm not gonna show you the, the guitar. I'm gonna show you the guitar. This is the moment where I'm like, I wish I could edit this, but I'm not gonna. Fuck it. So, G, alright? Says so 4. And then it goes to uh, C. Oh, my bad, B. What? Yeah, of course, B. Says four, C, and C minor. You know, uh, the C is not supposed to become minor like that. That's not a, a thing in uh, the major uh, mode. <laughs> Again, I don't know everything about that stuff, but you know. It, it's unexpected, it's it's a borrowed chord from like the, the parallel minor or whatever, however you want to look at it, um, which they stole from The Air That I Breathe by the Hollies. Um, but whatever, it's it's just like, it's, it's become a, a real, actual, prominent part of like songwriting. Like you see all those songwriters uh, come out and they go to Berkeley or any any music school like that, maybe they go to a songwriting school or something like that, and they all have that chord in there because it spices things up and uh, it feels like a way to pay tribute to uh, those older bands like Bowie and Radiohead, etc. And it's just like, hearing Coldplay do it is uh, is beautiful and I'm, I'm sure they've done it a bunch on previous records, I haven't. I can't really find a spot where they did that on the first two albums, but if I start talking about their first two albums, we're going to be here a while. Easy world, I do. I just want you.
I'm such a sucker for Coldplay, man. <sighs> uh, hold on. What am, I, what am I doing? I, um... I wanted to uh, apologize for any uh, misconcep misconceptions that might uh, be uh, <clears throat> generated by my poor grasp of music theory. Don't trust any music theory word that that comes out of my mouth where I'm actually you, you know using the actual words and not uh, metaphors or imagery because uh, my grasp of it is uh, very much artisanal and I understand some concepts but I definitely change up a lot of them to fit my own view of music and probably by uh, by laziness right I could just learn about the actual stuff but yeah anyway I was, yeah, I uh, didn't finish what I meant to say. Sometimes I get frustrated in those new videos, like the last couple videos I made, because um, in my previous videos of uh, Composer Breakdown, I tried to, when I had an idea, I went ahead and did a cut in the video and explained something with the piano or compared it to another song. I can't really do that now, because it's like, doing this right now it doesn't take a lot of clicks i'm not editing the audio i'm not doing anything i'm just like muting the mic uh so you can enjoy the actual full quality of the sound without weird echoes and stuff muting the mic when when i'm putting on the music and that's all i'm doing uh so that's when i actually edit something it's like 10 times as many clicks and it's it's uh it's intense and if i if i make pauses maybe i can figure it out but it's like I never learned the actual work ethic of being like responsible with my movements and, sh and stuff. So 
I'm not. I, I don't want to do that right now. But yeah. Anyway, uh, I think I might have heard it a theremin somewhere in there at the beginning of that string arrangement with the high notes. Felt so fluid that it's like maybe some sort of plugin, but like it reminds me of the sound of the theremin. Uh, and I was struggling to remember the name of that instrument even. Five four in there, like, damn. Never really heard um, that rhythm in Coldplay song. Say what you want about these guys. They have. A lot of uh, tricks up their sleeve, and uh, there's some Nick Mason drumming happening, which uh, I understand why. I was told it's a Pink Floyd-like thing. The probably the guitar solo influenced, you know, my friend's decision to refer to this track as a Pink Floyd-like track as well. But it's it does it doesn't sound like like Gilmore at all, you know. Uh, Coldplay's guitar player, I think his name is. Um, What's happening to my brain? Jesus. Uh, Johnny Buckland, uh, he's um, he's really good at arrangements and he's really good as a, you know, stand standalone uh, guitarist as well. I like his, his solos that are pretty rare on uh, records, but if you go ahead and watch some live performances, they replace some of his arrangements uh, with like solos and stuff like that because as opposed to the studio where you can do as many overdubs as you want and so you can work on the sound even like spatially etc uh, when you're on stage or one man if you don't uh, hire another guy to play parts you sometimes it felt it feels more natural to change the arrangement and that's what a lot of um, guitar players alike do they come in with parts in the studio maybe one is on the right maybe one's on the left and live they just ditch the whole thing and improvise or like play little bits of each part um, or like you know if, if there's a written solo on the record they play it um, like the audience knows it a little and improvise a little like I watched um, for the first time I watched uh, Freddie Mercury's full tribute concert uh, last night and Brian May did a bunch of that he uh, for example uh, on the solo of a little thing called love, a crazy little thing called love, he reminded you of of uh, the version of the solo that's on record with a, a different tone, sort of, but included some improvised licks in there, so that I, I I feel like as an audience member, when you're in there, you get super excited and you you can piece together the emotions that you felt maybe when you were you know when those songs were growing on you, you were listening to them at home or whatever. And then you also get to experience a unique, a unique thing, right? Um, what else do I got? Love the bass inversions. I wrote it down. Yeah, I love the bass inversions. Uh, I think on a song like that, it's it's absolutely crucial to have like changes in the arrangement and and you know, um, hope. Uh, thankfully, rather, it's not a it's not a drill. This song, you know, it's not ten minutes of the same thing. It actually changes and evolves all the time, and all the chords change, um, that the the lyrics change, all the arrangements. So it's not boring at all. But it could be if uh, if the arrangements stayed the same. So like the bass, instead of playing roots, uh, it's it's going ahead and and playing some inversions. Simple stuff, but you know, again, one of the things that make make Coldplay because they have this these great songs um, and these great arrangements um, by Johnny Buckland and and so like the bass doesn't need to be so fancy you know it, it needs to hold down the bottom but from time to time a little inversion goes a super long way I like this track I uh, music is really something man yeah, I'm frustrated that I can't really make uh, the videos that I can make that I want to make, <laughs> but this is uh, this is what I can manage for now, and I hope uh, I hope at least some of what I said was uh, somewhat interesting, and also I can't really include more of the video in there because depending on publishers etc, they like they have different policies on what they block. On my channel, I have like videos that. I just show the whole music video and it's not blocked and sometimes I just show a bit of it and it gets blocked. Uh, it's really annoying to deal with and like you guys won't enjoy what you can see anyway from the publishers that block some stuff.
um, because I have to censor it to a point where you can't really understand what's going on in the video. So just, yeah, see this as a audio breakdown or whatever. How funny would it be if they actually still blocked that? If there's a little black square Instagram moment on the, oh shit, shit, shit. on the, on the screen, um, well, it means the, the publishers, um, still blocked that little bit. Holy shit. Okay. Bye.